Welcome everybody, my name is Michael, and today we are discussing about Lebanon and the banking system failing over there. Now we've known about this ever since. Remember that large explosion that shocked Lebanon, Beirut, their capital, and also shocked the internet. So ever since then, that was a huge expose of what was going on with the corruption over there. Because their response to that after the situation, we learned a lot about that. And turns out it wasn't so peachy over there. A lot of people, a lot of the citizens were suffering. They didn't have access to their money. Despite not being a third world country, it was close. It was close to it. And a lot of people were suffering. And they couldn't withdraw their money then. And they can't withdraw their money now. And the banks were closing for three days. And you can't withdraw. It doesn't matter who you are. You can be a billionaire. You can have $10 in the bank. And the bank's job is designed to function. And maybe I'm upset because Chase has blocked too many of my deposits. And one of those, uh, one of those two <laughs> checks that I deposited yesterday passed. Everything's fine. It's a smaller check. And the other one hasn't. So, first of all, it's a federal check. It's a government check. And those should deposit... Boom, 24 hours, that's it. And they're saying maybe the 27th you'll get it. <laughs> that's a little away. And I've called and supervisors can't do anything. And I asked, you know, to speak to a manager. I felt like a Karen, but that's what I did. And nothing helped. And I was basically told can't do anything but wait and I called multiple times just to see if I get a different answer but no it was the same answer sometimes you can you can get it on hold but anyway so I know exactly what it feels like because this isn't the first time but this time I thought maybe it's going to be a little different with Chase you know because it's a federal check and they have nope <laughs> Chase does this to to tax refunds to stimulus checks to to um, those business loans that were supposed to help start with a P I forgot their whatever it was and that's not right. That's not right for a bank. Same thing with the banks in Lebanon, except they take it a step further. They want to be even better than Chase and just shut down the whole bank. Listen, it's my money and I want it now. Remember that commercial, you know, people screaming out the window. It's my money and I want it now. Well, it's gotten so bad in Lebanon that people are robbing banks to steal their own money, which I really wonder... I mean, is it a crime at that point? Of course, they're going to treat it like a crime, but are, are the judges going to look differently? Is technically you're stealing your own money. Like, the the crime will be, well, you know, hopefully you're not using violent force, but I, I'm not sure what the crime would be. The crime would be theft. But is it really? I don't know. So if, any, if anybody's an expert on that, let, let us know, because this lady, and, and there was multiple cases of this recently, but this lady specifically stood out because she robbed the bank to get access to her money because her sister was sick. That's just ludicrous. That's what happens when a banking system fails, my friends. And this isn't just in Lebanon. We've seen this in so many countries around the world. And sometimes we have cases like this happen in, you know, first world, uh, first class countries. And People are shocked, but they don't understand how close it can get to a Lebanon situation. You know, what if 2008 was a magnitude higher? You don't know what would happen at that point. What if even more banks, what if even more people lost their money? It's just crazy what's happening right now. So I just want to go through this with you guys. So this lady comes in there and she repeatedly asked the bank, can she withdraw? Her sister is sick. Her sister has cancer. Her sister needs $50,000 to, uh, to have treatment. And in a life or death situation, you, you got to take drastic measures. So after being told you can only withdraw 200 Lebanese pounds, you know what she did? She took out a toy gun, and it, that probably was not great, but she robbed the place for $20,000 of her own funds. And now... The drastic measures, it's not just one person, but it's entire heists where people are coming to a bank 
And after being told no, after the bank shutting down, it's your money. You need money to survive. It's a basic measure right now for food, for shelter. This is a human need. They're robbing the banks. And usually in cases like this, you have the International Monetary Fund that comes in and gives loans. And you've seen these massive loans happen in Ukraine, which, by the way, Ukraine's going to have a problem paying that back. But that's a different story for a different day. This has happened time and time again. You, you come you, you come in with the Red Cross, the United Nations, they, they give loans, the Inter International Monetary Fund, the World Bank, all this stuff. And people don't realize, you know, th these aren't just like, it's not charity work. It's loans. You got to pay back. There's money to be made. Greed. Profits. And you know what happens? It puts the country in an even worse position than it was in before. Well, Lebanon is in such a bad position that they have three various governments with three various religions that cannot agree with themselves on one common topic. Meaning the International Monetary Fund looks at this and they're like, I'm not giving you a loan? Are you crazy? So they're not getting a loan. And the situation is getting worse and worse and worse. Now, not to say that crypto is going to be a savior in this situation, but in some cases around the world, as long as there's still ATMs and the internet is around and in Lebanon, the, the situation is quickly uh, disintegrating, getting into an even worse state. But as long as it doesn't into, like, turn into a serious situation or Afghanistan, you will have some countries and some events and some time places that crypto might be able to come in and save some of these people. It's not going to save all. It's not a end all be all solution, but you have to take it with a grain of salt because right now crypto may be a solution for what might happen 10, 20, 30 years from now. What happens when a Lebanon situation or what happened in Afghanistan Maybe not as extreme, but what happens if suddenly a situation... Can people not open their doors correctly? Are they setting off the car alarm because someone can't find their car? I mean, we're right next to a target. Can you not find your car? Or can you not enter? Your I've seen this time and time again. People are just like, ah, let me yank the door handle. It's not opening. Anyway, so what happens if the situation disintegrates... Uh, in America, there will be a time where eventually, you know, we're not going to be a world superpower anymore. But um, that's still far away. However, it, it, it's good to keep that in mind. What happens in Lebanon today might happen, maybe not necessarily in America. It could. Um, but in, in there are so many other well-developed countries that it could happen in. And might not happen to our generation, but might happen to the next generation. And we might be a part of this we, we will definitely be alive to witness it more and more so the economic situation is, is getting worse and and right now we're we're not in a good spot check this out our new treating and i love uh i love seven series and s classes and audi a8s this is the executive package so you got a little tablet that pops out over here also has the smart key there we go look at that that's so awesome of course the vehicle's off right now but pretty cool and only thirty thousand dollars thirty one thirty two whatever we're listing out because we just got our answer so we're not sure but not bad really it looks great from the outside though of course uh here we are very happy with chase yet again I uh, made a mistake yet again. It's always with Chase. I was rushing to work, and PNC has fewer banks in the nearby vicinity. Didn't have time to sign up with that other uh, Wintrust bank yet. Because uh, every single time I have free time, they're usually closed. Or I have to do something else on my one day off. So, I had a Chase right next to the ortho yesterday. I said, well, I need the money immediately best thing to do is probably not deposit through the app because then I'm not going to get the money immediately. Well, well, I didn't get the money immediately anyways, because what ended up happening is 
one check was almost entirely deposited, and then the second check, none of it came in. And that was a larger check, but of course, both were larger over the $1,000 limit, uh, where usually over $1,000 for some accounts, but it varies on each account. There's a random algorithm, and I've deposited larger checks before where I was able to call and ask for a supervisor and whatever and get told no, 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 but eventually they clear it. Well, in this case, got to the supervisor and nothing, and they said, we can't do anything. I'm sorry. And I was told no so many times, and one check, you know, 24 hours later, cleared fully. So I have $1,800 available, which went for bills and everything. And I've got another larger bill tomorrow where I only need a couple hundred bucks because um, I got most of it remaining from yesterday. But I had to do grocery shopping. I had to, um, had to get some, uh, what was it? I had to pay for the orthodontist, $300. I couldn't put it on a credit card yesterday. And with that, I'm out a couple hundred dollars for tomorrow. 